Earlier this week, I had an awesome idea for a countdown video. I thought to myself that I should take out the coasters of my top 50 list and find the absolute most extreme. By that, I'm not just talking about the most intense. I'm talking about rides that'll have you process what you've just experienced while you're sitting on the final brake run. Rides that throw you about like there's no tomorrow, and rides that try their absolute best to kill you. These coasters are typically my favorites in the world with the exception of coasters like Steel Vengeance and many of the other RMC hybrids. Because let's face it, RMCs don't typically try to kill you, they're just like really good, right? Rides. Typically, extreme coasters can be seen as having the most intense positive Gs, the craziest pacing, the strongest of ejector airtime, and etc. So with that being said, I look forward to sharing my list with you guys today. Before we dive into it, I'd like to say that if you are looking forward to the video, you should drop a like, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel to show your support. But otherwise, I'm ready to get right into the list. These are the top 10 most extreme coasters I've ridden, starting with a couple of honorable mentions. Some quick honorable mentions include rides like Kumba, Montu, Riddler's Revenge, Shockwave, Raptor, Viper, Accelerator, and Superman Krypton Coaster at night. I just wanted to briefly mention those so that I don't get any comments asking where they are. But alright, now let's get into the actual top 10 list. Number 10, Canyon Blaster at Adventure Dome. Yes, it's true, despite the modest stats, this coaster is the most intense and extreme aero looping coaster I've ever ridden. Once you decline that first drop, it's almost like it's all non-stop from there. You begin with two insane vertical loops that'll cause you to hardcore gray out every time. And this gray out is so powerful that it actually sustains itself all the way through the next element, which is a little speed hill. So imagine that your butt's out of your seat as you're still graying out, and that's what that element's like. This then leads into the most intense double corkscrew I've experienced to date. Even though these elements are typically quite lackluster on most coasters, this one has a bite to it because of its pacing. Then there's a killer finale featuring helixes that are intertwined in the surrounding rockwork. I'd say what makes Canyon Blaster so extreme is its pacing that it takes all these elements with. And even with Viper at Six Flags Magic Mountain in my credits count, I will happily argue that Canyon Blaster is the most fast-paced aero coaster I've ever experienced. Number 9, Batman the Ride Clones. While all the Batman clones I've ridden are super intense, I'm going to be particularly talking about the one at Six Flags Magic Mountain for a second. It is without question the most intense, and to this day, I can't believe how fast it rides. Along with fast pacing, the compact nature of this ride makes it the most extreme inverted coaster I've ridden to date. All of its elements are quite small, but have a lot of speed paired with that, making for some ridiculous positive g-forces. And better yet, these g's are sustained more so than almost any other coaster I've ridden. As of now, I haven't gotten around to riding the one at Six Flags over Georgia, which is supposed to be the fastest, but riding this one has to be almost as good as that one. If not, it's probably just as good, so let me know down in the comments if you've ridden both and how they compare. Number 8, Mind Blower at Fun Spot Kissimmee. In this case, roughness and fast pacing make for an out of control coaster that's a lot more intense than you'd expect. A good word I'd use to describe this ride is relentless, alongside a lot of the other coasters that made this list. You've got a killer first drop, fast paced corkscrew, and so many intense turns and airtime points throughout the layout. These are all taken back to back and combined with the ride's notorious roughness, it's all the more aggressive. While maybe not the absolute most intense in terms of G's or stats, I actually think Mind Blower is the most extreme coaster currently operating in Florida. Number 7, El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. Another relentless wooden coaster that's a lot rougher than many make it out to be, this ride will have you catching your breath whenever you can. But it may be challenging to do so because this ride is absolutely relentless and has very few dead spots. What gives El Toro an entry on this list is its sequence of airtime moments, the power of the airtime moments, and the pacing up until the little meandery bit at the end. I'm sure this one wasn't the most surprising pick because most people who ride it seem to agree. But El Toro, to me, is the more extreme, shorter, wooden equivalent to steel vengeance at cedar point number six top thrill dragster at cedar point perhaps the most insane adrenaline rush of my life was spent sitting on the launch track of dragster for my first ever time the anticipation is absolutely perfect with the engines revving crowd of people watching from the bleachers and the 420 foot tall tower straight ahead in a matter of seconds though you take off and ride through one of the most intense launches in the world so intense that it'll cause your cheeks to flap and try to rip the skin off your face and just following this you rise up the very element that makes dragster the second tallest coaster on earth then you fall back down and repeat the sensation of the 120 mph per hour speeds once more. Trust me, there's a reason why this is one of my favorite rides in the entire world. That adrenaline rush without question makes Dragster worthy of a spot on this list. Number 5, Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. I'm sure many of you have heard about how ridiculous the pacing and whip is on RMC Raptor coasters. This being the first one I've ridden is one of the most insane roller coasters I've ever seen. It's an absolute powerhouse that doesn't give up one bit until you hit the final brake run. Which, speaking of, the sheer amount of speed you hit those brakes with should tell you a little something about how this coaster maintains its speed. Amongst this, you've got some of the most violent ejector airtime moments in the world. 
The restraints do take away from these airtime moments a little bit, but you can still absolutely feel yourself being launched up into space. And man, if Wonder Woman's told me anything, it's just getting me more excited for Railblazer. I hope it runs just as relentless as this thing did. Number 4, King Da Ka at Six Flags Great Adventure. A ride that made this list for all the same reasons as Top Thrill Dragster is also a near clone of the ride. The only differences really are the taller height, slightly faster speed, and the reason I'm putting it two spots higher, the rough and aggressive nature. It's nothing to complain about, but rather spruces things up a bit and makes the experience quite a bit different than Dragster's. The one downside is that you got these bulky over-the-shoulder restraints opposed to Dragster's tiny little lap bars. But it's not too big of a deal, and honestly, both rank inside of my top 15 roller coasters I've ridden right now. King Daka is one of the craziest adrenaline rushes you'll ever experience on a coaster. Number 3, Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. Arguably the most intense roller coaster on planet Earth, it would be rude of me not to give I-305 a high spot on the list. By far, this ride has some of the most insane pacing in the world. Once you decline the 300 foot drop, it's all low to the ground, fast paced elements with rapid fire transitions. Plus you've got some insane gray outs to look forward to on this coaster also. These things combined make it so obvious that this is one of the most extreme coasters in the United States at least. With that said, I haven't ridden I-305 since 2018, so my excitement is at a maximum for when I get back on it this year. Number two, Skyrush at Hershey Park. It was a tough call because I really wanted to put Skyrush at number one, but before we get into the one coaster that rivals it in terms of how extreme it is, I did want to highlight this world-class coaster first. Skyrush has some similar elements to Intimidator 305 with some rapid fire maneuvers and low to the ground elements from start to finish. The main difference is the absolutely absurd ejector airtime which I-305 unfortunately does not have. So that, along with the fact that it pulls a stupid amount of positive Gs makes this ride unbelievably extreme. Plus, with the notorious restraints that it has which pin you down, it almost makes it so this ride is throwing you around like a ragdoll. If I could sum up Skyrush's ride experience in just one sentence, I'd tell you that it's going to try its best to rip your body in half. But it's honestly amazing that this coaster even exists. I can never believe how extreme and intense it is every single time I ride it. If you're looking for the most crazy roller coasters, you've just got to get out to Hershey Park and experience this demented and demented creation. Number 1, X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Had I not gotten a re-ride recently on X2, Skyrush would have been number one on my list without question. But riding it again after the over 400 day coronavirus closure reminded me how insane this ride is. X2, more so than any other coaster I've ridden, absolutely tries its best to kill you. That's literally the best way I can describe it. The ride is actually trying to commit homicide. Throughout the layout, you are flipping about through some crazy yet jarring elements, and this isn't even to mention that X2 is not the smoothest ride in the world. So when you put all these things together, it really kind of makes sense. The fact that aerodynamics went out with this ride is absolutely insane. I cannot say enough amazing things about X2, but I also can't say enough about how intense it is. As of right now, I'm dubbing X2 the most extreme roller coaster in North America. I've currently ridden 242 roller coasters, and I've yet to find another coaster that's even close to being as extreme with the exception of the aforementioned Skyrush. Seriously, if you have not ridden this ride yet and you are the most daring of thrill seekers, put it high on your bucket list. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I hope you've enjoyed the topic and have a better understanding of what might make a coaster more extreme. If you found the video interesting, I'd strongly encourage you to drop a like on this video and comment your most extreme coaster credits down below. It's the best way to show your support on the channel as well as subscribing to the channel if you want to see more videos like these. Other than that, I applaud you to making it to the end of the video and I'll see you guys all in the next one.